Hi everybody and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you a music recommendation system that is a simplified version of what Spotify uses to recommend artists to its users. I'm going to show you the code of how to do that as well as the theoretical background. I'm not going to get too much into the details, but I'm going to give you enough information for you to have an intuition of what this is all about. Let's get started. There are many types of music recommendations. The one that we're all familiar with is recommending directly songs, but it is also possible to recommend albums, playlists, or even artists. Recommendations come in different forms, but they also use different techniques. Here are some common recommendation techniques to use for music recommendation. Popularity-based recommendation. In this case, we recommend songs that are particularly popular. Then there is content-based filtering, which concentrates on the content itself. For example, if we are recommending songs, we want to get all the information we can about a song in the form of metadata or descriptions, or for example, tags like mood tags or genre tags. And in this way, we can describe a song and then match it with the taste of users and recommend the ones that are in line with users' taste. Then we have collaborative filtering. In this case, engineers collect users' taste information. Collaborative filtering completely disregards the information about content and only relies on users' taste information. The basic assumption is that if listener A has a similar taste as a listener B, then it's more likely for listener A to have the same opinion as listener B on a song that listener A has never heard before than having the opinion, uh, the same opinion of a random user. We can merge all of these techniques together. And this is what Spotify does. Here we have the architecture of Spotify's music recommendation system. As you can see down here, we have a couple of modules. One that does that has batch NLP models that gets as input news, blogs and text descriptions regarding songs. And then we have another one that's batch called batch audio models. So this one extracts information directly from row audio of a song. So this information could be uh, factors like densibility, key, tempo. So this, both of these models deal with content-based uh, recommendation. This is used and it goes down in the recommendations pipeline. Then we have another component of this recommendation architecture, which is the batch collaborative filtering models. They use collaborative filtering using play logs or users interactions and track metadata. So as you can see, even Spotify uses a combination of multiple music recommendation techniques. This is something that is done in order to address the problem that single recommendation techniques have. Now that you have a general introduction about music recommender systems, I'm going to tell you what we're actually going to build. We will be building a music artist recommender using collaborative filtering. Collaborative filtering comes itself into different shapes, but most of the implementation use a technique called matrix factorization. In the following section, I'm going to tell you more about matrix factorization and the specific technique that we're going to be using for our recommender that's called alternating list squares. At the core of collaborative filtering, we have the concept of a user item matrix. Such matrix expresses the opinions of user regarding different items. What are items? Well, items can be anything. They can be songs, artists or book and movies. For each cell, you'll see either a value or nothing. Well, in the case of a value, like for example, in the first cell here, this value expresses the opinion of user one regarding item one. 
As we said, it is possible to have no values. For example, user one has no opinion regarding item two, and that's totally possible. Think about like Spotify, for example. So you have millions and millions of songs and users can't possibly have an opinion regarding all of them because it's just impossible for them to listen uh, all the catalog that you have on Spotify. What this means is that this user item a matrix most of the times is actually sparse, meaning that are, there are only a few values compared to all the different cells. We are not going to use the term item for our user item matrix, but rather artist because we will be doing music artist recommendation. If we take a look at a row within the user artist matrix, like the row for user number three, we can understand that this row represents the opinions of the user for all the artists he has listened. Of course, this is a sort of musical taste, if you will. With this initial understanding of the user artist matrix, the next logical question is to ask ourselves, what is the role of collaborative filtering? Well, the idea is to try to predict all the cells that have no values, have no opinions. So in other words, with collaborative filtering, we want to try to predict the scores for all the items or artists in this case that users haven't heard yet. Predicting opinions is important because at that point, we will be able to understand what items a user may like or may not like and use that information to recommend the items or artists that a user may appreciate the most. In order to predict these values, we can use a matrix factorization algorithm called alternating list squares. Matrix factorization aims at decomposing a big complex user artist matrix into two smaller matrices, one called the user matrix and the other one called the artist matrix. The idea here is that the moment you multiply these two matrices, you get back the almost the original user artist matrix with the missing values. Now, the user matrix is basically a series of embeddings that represent the different users. Each user gets a row in the user matrix and each artist, conversely, gets is represented within the artist matrix by a column. Now, the basic idea is that the user matrix and artist matrix should have the same number of factors. These factors are features that represent certain characteristics of users and artists. For example, factor one, which runs as a column in the user matrix and runs as a row in the artist matrix, could, for example, be the genre of an artist, whereas Factor two could be the usual instrumentation that an artist uh, uses. The important thing is that the user matrix and the artist matrix should have the same number of factors. When we use alternating list squares, we can decide the number of factors that we want to decompose our original user artist matrix into. The larger the number of factors and the better we are going to reconstruct the user artist matrix. Of course, there's always a trade-off between a completeness of reconstruction and computational efficiency. The advantage of collaborative filtering is that it allows us to extract these features or factors without us doing the feature engineering. In other words, we really don't know what those factors actually represent and it's up to these black box training based model to figure them out. This can be an advantage, of course, because we don't need to do the engineering or feature engineering for the algorithm, but at the same time, it can be a disadvantage because we don't know what those embeddings and features actually represent.
By multiplying the user and the artist matrix, we get back a matrix that's similar to the user artist matrix. What if we want to get a specific value, a missing value in the user artist matrix? Well, this is very easy to do by using some simple linear algebra. All we need to do is to perform a dot product between the correct user in the user matrix by the correct artist in the artist matrix. In this case, here, the cell we're interested in is at user one artist two. So we'll do the dot product of the user one in user matrix by artist by artist two in the artist matrix. And this will give us a value. And that value is the reconstruction or the actual prediction in this case of the value in this cell in the user artist matrix. If you're not familiar with linear algebra, don't worry, I have a video that will guide you through some of these concepts and especially the dot product. So you can check it out up here in the video. Now you should know how to make predictions for all the missing values in the user artist matrix by using matrix factorization. The next obvious step is to ask ourselves how do we recommend artists to users? That is super simple and I'm sure you can guess it. Well, the, the algorithm really goes into two steps. First, we choose a user that we want to uh, recommend artists to and then we multiply the user vector in the user matrix associated to that user with all the artist vectors so that we get opinions, values for all the different artists for a given user. This means, saying that we choose user one, that we take the user vector in the user matrix for user one, and then we multiply, we do the dot product with uh, artist one, artist two, and artist three. At this point, we will have three values that represent the opinions of user one for artist one, artist two, and artist three. Now it's time to go to the next step. What we do is we simply recommend the n artists with highest scores. Of course, n is completely arbitrary and you can decide to recommend the first five artists, two artists or 10 artists, that's completely up to you. But it is important that we get the n top artists who are new to the user. I'm sure you've noted that there's a central argument that's still missing, and that is, we do have the user artist matrix. How do we pass from that to the two user matrix and artist matrix? How do we do this decomposition? Well, that's when alternating least squares come into place. Alternating least squares repeats the two very same steps again and again. It alternates between one and two, and that's why it's called alternating least squares. What are these two steps? Well, first of all, we fix the user matrix and find the optimal artist matrix, and then we just do the reverse. We fix the artist matrix and we find the optimal user matrix. Now, the part in the name of the algorithm, that's least squares, can be understood by analyzing the word optimal in these two steps. What is optimal? Well, optimal means minimizing the least squares. You now have enough intuition of music recommendation so we can move from the theoretical part to the implementation so that I'll show you how you can build a music artist recommender using ALS or alternating list squares. For that, we need some data. What data are we gonna use? Well, there's a data set called the last FM data set where we have a lot of music listening data. Last FM is a website that allows you to track your listening sessions and to watch other people's preferences. It's a great service to discover new music as well as to get data regarding listening habits of listeners all over the world. This is the Last FM dataset. Let's take a look at the readme file first. 
The dataset was released in May 2011. If we take a look at the description, you can see that this dataset contains social networking, tagging and music, artists, listening information. And if we take a look at the data statistics, you can see that there are almost 2,000 users and almost 18,000 artists with more than 90,000 user listened artist relations. And these are of the type tuples where you have a user, an artist, and the listening count, which is basically the weight. Now we have a bunch of different files. We are interested in this artist's file. This file contains information about music artists and their relative artist ID, their ID that is assigned within this data set. And then we have this user artists file where we have the artist listened by each user. Let's take a look at these two files. So this artist, as you can see, is a plain text file. We have an ID, we have the name of the artist and then some further information that we really don't care about. But let's take as an example, artist two here. So the ID is two. The name of the artist is Diary of Dreams. We can use this artist file to map from artist ID to the name of the artist. Okay, let's go back here and take a look at this user artists file. The format of this file is quite straightforward. We have a user ID the artist ID that the user has listened to and the weight, which is the listen count. You can find the link to the last FM dataset in the description box below. Now let's move on to some code that manipulates data and allows us to load it. We are in PyTerm and here you have the package in Python that I've built for this video. As you can see, we have the last FM data here. This is the data set that we just saw. And here you have the package itself that's called music collaborative filtering. Now this is a poetry package. So if you want to install it, which along with all the different dependencies, you should go to the terminal and write poetry install. I'm gonna do that, but it doesn't change anything because this is already installed. Now let's take a look inside the package. And here you have two modules. One is called data, which is the one that we're gonna be looking at right now. And the other one is recommender. With data, we have a bunch of functions and classes. Well, it's not really a bunch. It's a couple of routines that we need to manipulate data for the collaborative filtering algorithm or task. So as I said, we have two main things here. So one is a function called load user artists. Uh, which loads the user artist file in the last FM dataset and it returns a user artist matrix in CSR format. We'll see what that is in a second. And then we have this class called artist retriever that gets the artist name from the artist ID. So let's take a look at this first to load user artist. This function accepts a user artist file and it's a path and it's path to these, where is it? Here, to this file and it returns a SciPy CSR matrix. CSR matrix is a compressed sparse row matrix. In other words, is a full measure of sparse matrices that work with SciPy. How does this work? Well, first of all, we load the user artists using pandas. We use the read CSV function and we use the tab as a separator. And here we pass the a user artist file. Then we set the indexes to user ID and artist ID, which are these two guys up here. And then, we create a COO matrix. So this is another SciPy sparse matrix format. Then we return not the COO matrix, but rather we convert that to CSR. If you're wondering why we need to return a CSR matrix, that's because we're gonna be using a library that has an ALS implementation that works with CSR matrix as input. 
Let's take a look at this routine in action down here. So we load the user artist matrix and then we print it. Let's do it. And as you can see, we have a nice print of this. So here you can see, for example, that we have 251 and this is the value. So this is for cell with row index two and column index 51. Let's take a look at this. And as you can see, it's basically the same thing, right? It's the first item in this file. So user ID two and artist ID 51 and the weight is 30,000 something. Okay, good. Now we can move on to the second item that we have in this data module that's called the artist retriever. This is a class that gets the artist name from the artist ID. We have a simple constructor where we instantiate an artist's data frame. This is a pandas data frame, but we instantiate that to none. Then we have a load artist method in here where we can pass the artist file, which is this file here in the last FM data set. And we, with this method, we just load the artists and we save them here in this private attribute as a data frame. Then we have the last bit of it, which is this get artist name from ID, where we can pass the artist ID, which could be, for example, one, two, three, four, and we get back a string. And the string, of course, is the artist name. And to do that, we use our data frame and we use the lock function. We pass the artist ID and we want to get back the name. Let's take a look at at this artist retriever in action. So I'm gonna just comment this one out and I'm gonna re-instantiate this. So we instantiate a, an artist retriever, then we load the artist and of course this is the path to the um, artist file in the last FM uh, data set and which should be this file over here. Then we call get artist name from ID passing ID number one. We get the artist name and we print it. Let's run this. Cool. And as you can see, the name of the artist whose ID is one is Malice Miser. I don't know who this artist is, but let's check out whether this is correct. And as you can see, that's correct. The ID is number one and Malice Miser is the name of the artist. If you're wondering where you can get the code that I've just showed you, well, as always with my video in the Sound of AI channel, you can have the code through the relative GitHub pages. You can find the link to the GitHub page for this code in the description box below. Now, let's move on to the next step, which is that of creating the recommender module. We are not going to implement alternating list squares from scratch, but rather we're gonna be using a library that's very, very helpful for doing any type of collaborative filtering. The library is called Implicit and it has a lot of functionalities and algorithms that you can use for collaborative filtering and recommendation of any type of content, music included. Let's check out the recommender module. In this module, we only have one class called implicit recommender. And then down here, we have some code to run recommendation. Let's analyze implicit recommender first. Well, this is a class that computes recommendations for a given user using collaborative filtering models created using the implicit library. In other words, we can think of implicit recommender as a wrapper around the functionalities provided by recommenders created with the implicit library. It also has some additional functionalities like retrieving the artist's name directly from the artist ID. 
This class has two public attributes. One is artist retriever, which is an instance of the artist retriever class that we uh, took a look at earlier. And then it also has an implicit model, a model created with the implicit library. Let's take a look at the different methods. Of course, we have a constructor where we pass an artist retriever and an implicit model via dependency injection and we assign them to these public attributes. Then we have the fit method that takes in a sparse CSR matrix, that's the user artist matrix, and it uses it to uh, train the implicit model. Then we move on to recommend. When we want to recommend something, we should pass three arguments. The first is the user ID, and this is the ID of the user we want to recommend content or artists to. Then we have the user artist metrics, which we should also pass. And finally, we pass a, an int argument, that's n, and this is the number of artists which we want to recommend to the user. Recommend returns a tuple with a list of string as the first argument and list of float as the second argument. Respectively, the first one is a list of artist names that we want to recommend and the scores or a list of scores that provides us the, the score for each of the artists in the artist list. Now, as you can see here, we wrap once again the functionality of the implicit model within this a recommend method. Indeed, we use the self.implicitModel.recommend passing in the user ID and the user artist metrics uh, at index n to get back a list of artist IDs and scores. And then we use the artist retriever functionality to move from a list of artist IDs to the relative names. And this is what we return in the end. Okay, as you can see so far, I haven't specified that I want an alternating list square method here or class here from implicit, but I've rather used a generic approach saying that the implicit model can be of any type recommender base. Uh, and that is because we may want to use alternating list squares or other recommenders that implicit provides us with. So this way we have a nice interface that we can use for multiple implementations. We now have all the necessary ingredients to run recommendations. Let's do it. To perform recommendations, we have to go through multiple steps. First of all, we want to load the user artists matrix, and we do so by using the load user artist routine. Then we instantiate the artist retriever and we load the artists from the last FM dataset. Next step, we instantiate ALS using implicit. And here we pass from a generic recommender base to an actual implementation. And as I said uh, in this video, uh, we are going to be using alternating least square to perform matrix factorization. Now, alternating least squares in implicit takes a number of different arguments. These are the most important ones. The number of factors or dimensions we want to decompose our artist, user artist metrics into. Number of iterations, I've put 10, but of course, to have better results, we can put more. And then there's also a regularization argument that I put to 0.01. After instantiating artist retriever and implicit model, we have all the necessary objects to instantiate an instance of implicit recommender. And we do so by, of course, passing the artist retriever and the implicit model at construction time. We now have the recommender and now we are ready to 
feet to train the recommender passing in the user artists metrics. Now we are ready to recommend artists by using the recommend method that we've implemented. And here we should pass the user ID. I'm just putting two as an example. We should pass the user artists. And finally, we should pass the number of artists that we want to be recommended. And here I put five. Once we've done all of this, I just print the results so that we're going to have a print with a list of artists and the relative score. Let's run the code to see if it works. The model is now training, going through different iterations. And then after that, we should get a result. And here you have the top five artists recommended to user number two. And with this, we are at the end of our journey of building a simple music artist recommender using collaborative filtering. By now, you should know quite a lot about music recommender systems and how to build them using the right tools, like for example, the implicit library. If you found this video useful, it would be great if you could like it and share it. And if you're new to the Sound of AI channel, I highly suggest you to go check out the Sound of AI Slack community. Here we have more than 6,000 people all passionate about all things music, speech and all your AI. I highly suggest you to join the community. You can find the link to the community again in the description box below. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.